Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Yahazak React. I'm reacting to a video today called Why do so many YouTubers go insane by the cursed judge? Why do so many YouTubers go insane? Actually, like, there is... I saw that title and I'm like, holy shit, that is such an interesting video idea. Why does this only have 41k views? We gotta find out, okay? Uh, let's, let's, just, let's just see it. Before I even got to tell my story, you're making a documentary on it so you can post it after the fact. So if it flops, you can have the hot news on how Fousey fucked up and he should kill himself. This is FouseyTube. The day is July 15th, 2018, and we're currently seeing the aftermath of a failed concert entitled Hate Dies, Love Arrives. Fousey, real name Yusuf Arakat, had been creating content since 2011. Considering the failure of TanaCon a few weeks prior, hopes weren't high for the concert. So Remember when TanaCon was a thing? Unconfirmed promises of artists like Drake. And Drake says he's never met YouTuber after Snoop he claims. showing up for it. Leading up to oh, the event, known shitster sick. Keemstar began filming a documentary about it, anticipating its failure. And to top it all off, <laughs> the entire wild. event was canceled due to a but bomb. But not surprising. A bomb wild, wild, but not surprising. Was never found and likely never existed. This video was filmed in the parking lot afterwards, with Keemstar, as well as Fousey's fans, in the crowd. I rewatched videos going viral after the attention you're giving me now of you saying, Fousey is the biggest piece of shit, egotistical asshole on this earth. I have bipolar and depression. That what you put into my head made me want to kill myself! So, how did we even get here? Yeah, yeah, actually, what's going on? Like, this, I, I'm just not familiar enough with this situation to have any proper input on it. But, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I've just never heard of this guy. But I think we're, we're about to see the, so the real big how stars. how did we even get here? PewDiePie? Yeah, uh, the PewDiePie had the infamous bridge scene. Uh, I don't like this title. These fucking articles, they're, that, they're just straight up bullshit. Um, they're, just, they're just wrong. Like... The internet's most famous gamer is out of excuses. He's not out of excuses. He wasn't looking for a fucking excuse. He just said, whoops, my bad guys. Sorry, I fucked up, ended the stream. And that's the end of that. You don't need anything else. You, you just, he misspoke. It happens. I pay. <laughs> what is this word? Oh, I pee. Okay, of course. I peed on Shane Dawson. You wish this was clickbait. What the fuck? <laughs> avocado, avocado. Okay, okay, no, no. Before we keep watching the video, I'm already enjoying this, by the way. What a, what a sick start. Um, I want to mention my theory. I believe the reason lots of YouTubers go insane is because as a, as a single person, you're not supposed to be affected by millions and millions and millions of people all the time giving you input, click, uh, giving you input, telling you sh you should kill yourself, telling you you shouldn't, telling you your stuff is great, telling you your stuff is horrible. There is so many people talking about you all the time. This amount of attention is not something an average human is supposed to experience. The truth of the matter is that Fousey's story isn't that special. And especially because when, when shit goes to shit, that creates attention when it can be good attention, it can be bad. There's YouTube itself, I think, breeds insanity. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, just the fact that it as a workplace doesn't have a limit on how much time you can work. And in fact, the more time you spend YouTubing, the better. And you can never YouTube too much. That in and of itself is enough to dr drive some people mad, right? What if... What if you're just addicted to seeing the numbers grow and you just work for 16 hours a day? Well, like, that's a, that's a, spe that's a brain damage speed run. Even though his path was different than any others, the story has been told time and time again. And the core of each one is YouTube. So many stories of a sudden rise, bloated egos... <laughs> seeing some of these videos again with these camera angles that were legendary when they came but out. The natural question that I and you might have is why? What about YouTube causes these people to go through the <laughs> All of these videos. Okay, uh, a bit of lore here, I think, is necessary. If we go to Yahazek, yeah, my, my main channel real quick. Uh, let me show you this. Years ago, or well, a year ago or something. I don't know. Let me find it. I actually analyzed. <laughs> that, that was, this is, this is me from, from a bit ago. Well, welcome. I actually analyzed a bunch of apology videos 
made by a bunch of different YouTubers. And I, so all these, all these examples he's showing right now, I've seen all of them at some point and <laughs> we spent a bunch of time binging them. And then I tried to recreate a perfect topology video later. But my point is all, all of these examples he's showing, like this guy with a dog, for example, I, <laughs> I am very well versed in the, in Success the science of how, chasm. of how you should perfectly Sorry. make these. Well, I have a few ideas. First, it's important to note what YouTubers were talking about. The question, why are all YouTubers insane, is pretty loaded after all. Yes. In order to explain properly, I need to introduce you to a little concept called the YouTuber spectrum. Okay. Generally speaking, Which he there made are two up reasons on his own, why I'm someone assuming. would subscribe to a YouTube channel. How One much of a content, and the other is personality. On the purely content okay. end, you'd have something like Mr. Data Beast. Theory. Where's Mr. Channel Beast? Channel that is only composed of purely content end, you'd have something like Data is Beautiful, a channel that is only composed of timeline graphs displaying things like the most popular. Oh, that's fair. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Shout out to Breaking Bad. But and even the then, you have some level of music and shit. Like there is still. Oh, I actually don't know. I haven't seen that channel, but I'm assuming a channel like that even then would still have a little bit of personality in it in the way they choose to show graphs in the music they play. But yes, you're staying mainly for for just the raw data. Like Jake Paul. While most hover around the middle of the pack, the mm -hmm. further right you go, it starts to get weird. <laughs> I call these people personality tubers. And while almost all of the most successful YouTubers yep. fit into this area, so do the most volatile. Yeah, most successful, but not all. Look at look at Mr. Beast. I'm so surprised he didn't mention him. He is a hundred percent content driven, but you know what? Content is the best content that has people in it. Well, in terms of, you know, views and appealing to the, the largest audience in the world. It is content with people interacting and doing wild shit and reacting, you know, like it it is people doing things and reacting to things. Uh that's why people like Mr. Beast, while being the most successful, are not entirely personality driven, as he would, as as he said. He is still 100% content driven, but that content involves people because that is what creates long term attachment to your content. Jake Paul. Because for data is beautiful. For for data is beautiful. For example, a channel like this one. I will watch the specific video I wanted to see and I will leave, right? I, I'm most likely not going to watch every single video because what if he starts showing me a graph about things I just don't care about, right? Well, if I don't care about it, then I'm not watching it. And whereas with a, a, a channel like Mr. Beast, what he does perfectly is he focuses 100% on the content of the videos. Like, well, he, he, the focus of his channel is 100% content, but he has the person, the people and the characters and his friends and whatnot in it. And that creates long-term attachment. And well, that's what you're coming back to the videos for, or for some people, you know, the pack, the for, for, for you go, it's a, a percentage of the audience. Again, it's not for everyone, you know, yeah, yeah, there is a level of generalization that has to go into it. You can't uh, entirely, uh, Exceptions exist. Weird. I'll just say that. I call these people personality tubers, and while almost all of the most successful YouTubers fit into this area, so do the most volatile. For every Markiplier, mm -hmm. there's a PewDiePie. You know what I mean? Now again, the no, I don't area. So do the most volatile. For every Markiplier, there's a. I'm sorry. Is this a diss on PewDiePie? Because I, I, PewDiePie is the most popular anti-Semitic <laughs> user amplified anti-Semitic rhetoric. Again, and a history of flirting with all. And this is this is bullshit. This is this is just straight up bullshit. Uh, right. Let me let me let me move my camera out of the way. This is just like made by the audience. The only the only reason this happens is because he is popular. He watches it when, if you make the amount of videos he he's made, there are bound to be slip ups, especially if you go live or. Uh, you are not the one editing your videos. So, and maybe you you had a miscommunication with your editor. He didn't know what you could keep in. There, there, there are phases where he was edgier. He, ca <laughs> no, no, I don't want to go into this discussion too long because that's not what the video we're watching is about. But uh, you know I, mean? I, I, I don't agree with the statement. Now, again, the, that's fine. the obvious question is a big fat why. Well, in order to answer that, we should consider what YouTube really is: irrational. Put simply, mm -hmm. statistically, you will not succeed on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> hey, Virtual, let's go. We reacted to a few of his videos before. In fact, some of my most popular reaction videos on this channel are 
me watching virtual videos because they're great. They're they're really good. Well, some magical stories exist of channels that blew up the moment they were created. His first video had five. All right, but internet historian is fucking. I mean, he's legendary. Like, actually, the, probably the most legendary channel on YouTube, or one of them at least. So I think yeah. The vast actually, we've reacted to his videos. Majority as well. of YouTubers take several years of creating before they can even make a couple hundred bucks every month. Put several years at least. Yeah, a hundred percent. Simply as possible. There has to be something wrong with you in order to succeed on YouTube. Or you have to be. I mean. You have to stand out. Well, is the nicer way to put it would be you have to stand out. For me, I have Asperger's or ASD is as the official diagnosis. However, for personality tubers, their problem more often than not are narcissistic tendencies. But that's what gets the views. They, they, I think when you play the character of a of a person, you okay. Let's look at it this way. You're a personality tuber, right? We'll use this term because it makes sense in the context of the video we're reacting to. If you're a personality tuber, then what do you want to do? That's right. You want to show something that is unique that people will stick around for because your content isn't isn't that. They're, they're there to see you do something, something, something that will be worth their time because why would they watch you if they could go watch someone else? Well, in the case of these guys, they start doing crazy shit because they realize that's what people want to see because nobody else is going as crazy as them. And then... If you play a character for long enough, you become the character, and you you shouldn't break, and you know break and okay 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 to to take a step back here for a sec. One thing that likes that destroys channels like this is when they break character, when they become a real person. Like say, imagine if Logan Paul, or is it Jake Paul? Which one is it? The one that's an asshole. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. They're the same person to me, basically on YouTube. They exist as one entity in my mind. The um. The one, the, the one that has their personality based around being an asshole, the, the, the one of the two, imagine if they suddenly stopped being an asshole. Well, no, nobody's going to watch him. And what happens if you play the character of an asshole every day of your life, assuming you make daily videos or record daily at least? What happens if you play that character all the time and even in real life, you sometimes have to pretend to be that way in case, you know, in case someone meets you once you're popular enough and it it will leach into your real personality to make a eventually very clear note this doesn't apply to everyone and i'm not saying that they have narcissistic personality disorder yes Just yes a few bullet points on the checklist a usc study conducted in 2006 by researcher drew pinsky concluded that celebrities have significantly more narcissistic personality traits on average than most people but that makes complete sense you're getting the attention of unholy of an unholy amount of people it is Difficult and not to develop narcissistic traits. Celebrity culture, it wouldn't For at some. all be a stretch to link that same condition. Or, right, right, okay, let me rephrase that. It, that. That's not true. It, it would be surprising if on average uh, there weren't more narcissistic people among content creators. To YouTube. In fact, there's a chance that effect is even increased as YouTube has a much more direct line from the YouTuber to the fans. Nah, I, I'd say places like Twitch and... Uh, a, live streaming platforms and the ones where you get instant feedback and the people feel like they're connecting to you on a more personal level are worse. And actually, that brings us me back to his point, which is actually great. It's that per, as a personality tuber, what you are, what you show yourself to be is what people are looking at. You're not playing... You're not... Like, like, well, I can't diagnose any narcissistic yep. personality traits. I, <laughs> I hope you know what I mean, because I lost my train of thought halfway through that sentence, but... I think I made my point at the start, so it's fine. Psychologist, there's one thing we know he has for sure, bipolar disorder. For those who are unaware, bipolar is a disorder where you have three notably different states of mind. One- All right, but he's just one person. I think it, it doesn't, uh... actually, you know what? No, I'll, I'll let him the cook, I'll let him cook. The other two are a manic state marked by extreme happiness and energy and a depressive state being the opposite. Someone with bipolar switches between these against their will, either okay. for hours, days, or weeks, depending on the type. Abusing right. drugs and alcohol can also increase the frequency of these episodes, creating a feedback loop of more mania or depression to more drugs right. over and over again. Viewed through this lens, Yusuf's actions make far more sense. While in a manic state, you can get grandiose ideas and act incredibly impulsively, especially if you stop taking your medicine, which is exactly what he did leading up to July 15th. However, I'd be wrong. 
wrong to say that these edge case YouTubers are the only people who feel the wear and tear of the website. Yeah, no, no, that's 100% not the case. Question time. How many movies has Quentin Tarantino directed? Fuck Ten. <laughs> Alright, fair. Dog, shut the fuck up. Very good. Question two. How many videos has Jax Films made? Plenty. <laughs> like to 7,000 or so, like 3,000. 1,352. Okay, wait, I thought it was more. Wait, no, wait. Okay, that's 2021. Wait, 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 no, wait. We actually gotta know. How do you even check? I, I don't know how to check anymore. I swear you could just go to the about page on YouTube or click videos and it would show. <laughs> Not anymore. I guess they changed it. Oh, well, who cares? Uh, oh, 1.5K videos shows right here. I'm actually stupid. Okay, it's less than I expected, but hey, no, it's still a lot. It's still a lot, like a lot, a lot, like what the fuck? Quentin Tarantino's been directing for 27 years. Jack's only been around for 15. Quentin's made a movie once every 2.7 yeah. years. Jack's only been around for Yeah, 15. the amount of content Quentin's you're putting out as a years. YouTuber is Jack just- Jack has made a video once every four days on average since 2006. <laughs> that's cr- like that's- See, Jack is part of a rapidly dying breed of YouTubers, the old guard, the ones who've been creating from the start. Nearly every other YouTuber from that time has disappeared from the public eye. Yeah, because uh, the meta changes and you either adapt and you become a new channel or, well, like you either adapt and slowly change over time or you just stop making content when, when like when, once you get tired of this because, you know, being a YouTuber in a way is for, for a lot of people, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I definitely don't want to say for everyone because there are lots of different types of channel, but for a lot, it's kind of like the life cycle of a of an actor, we'll say, right? You, you or, or an athlete, where you're going and you're speed running and you're doing as much as you possibly can in the short period of time before the type of stuff that you wanted to make stops being popular or becomes so popular that you're sat, the, the content is oversaturated and you're no longer unique and interesting. And... This shit is exhausting, so I can 100% see how someone would get tired and just say, no, fuck, I'm done with the system. Uh, I've, I've achieved whatever I wanted, rather, whether it be a seven, 7 million subs or fucking uh, a million dollars, you know, whatever, whatever it is. I shadow of who they once were or just plain stopped uploading. The funny thing yes. is that despite so many of these channels racking up more than a billion views total, after only a few years of inactivity, they're already slipping from public consciousness. And that's just the thing about YouTube. It's endless. In yes. terms of truly legendary directors, how many yes. are there? 20, maybe? The 20th most subscribed channel on YouTube still has 55 million subscribers. And I've never even heard of this channel. You see? You see? that That's crazy. Subscribers. Relevance is a scarcity on YouTube, not because of the amount of people watching, but instead the amount of people creating. Yeah, Every exactly. You... There is, f there is a lot of people watching, but the amount of people you're competing with is just wow. Don't upload a YouTube video is another couple hundred thousand views you're missing out on. Any break exactly, and y you, there is no limit to how much you can work. <laughs> like the more you do it, the better off you are. That is just a fact and you have to self-regulate and if you're not good at it that you you will get fucked over analytics your mind must be on youtube 24 7. that that is a hundred but like i remember I, again i mean it's hard for you guys to take advice from me as a channel with a fucking 30 subsism now but i'm i'm saying this from the not don't look at it from my perspective look at it from the perspective of other channels and me just ha being a person who's been around on YouTube for long enough to understand how things work, right? Right. I'm not talking from personal experience. I'm talking from the experience of what I've seen happen to others. Okay. For two point seven stopped. I just wanted to mention this because I feel like. So how many are there? You know, my opinion might sound somewhat irrelevant here. The amount of people watching, but instead the amount of people creating. Every single day you don't upload a YouTube video is nine after streaming yep. non-stop, essentially. In fact, a fun fact, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a bit about about uh, what he's talking about, right? Where you, your, your mind, you become, you, you become mentally, you stop being a human and you st become a YouTuber. I'll talk about that a little bit. On my main channel, uh, at some point, uh, I was, I, I, I committed hard and I started, uh, that was basically all I thought about for a little bit, just videos and videos and videos. And I started uploading very often and I was like, 
look at this, right? The scale of these videos, there's tiny, tiny, 40 views, 30, 30. And then at some point I just forgot I had a real life and started going harder on it. And those were the first videos on my channel to ever become big. And then guess what happened? That tired me out because I am an average human being. I am not built to work for 12 hours a day <laughs> for 200 hours a day. And so the moment, right? This, this was a spike. I, if I stuck to the same schedule, which was planned to be one video, one super edited video a week, like I actually planned to do that initially. If I stuck to it, there is zero chance my channel would have fallen off the way it did, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't force myself to stick to a unreasonable schedule schedule. And guess what happens? The moment I stop mentally, the, the moment it leaves my mind just for a little bit, the moment I start having a personal life, the number goes down and it, it's demoralizing as fuck. Seven. I remember the story when Ninja was at his peak. After streaming non-stop, essentially daily for months, he decided to go to E3 to meet fans and generally have fun. After returning just two days later, he lost 40,000 subscribers. That is, at minimum, $200,000 for a two-day break. And while he's a streamer, not a YouTuber, that same mentality streaming is a, a little more intense in that regard i will agree well, no quite a lot more intense but it, it's still the same concept it's just like the level is different of it but it, it's the same in a sense. affects every single creator on the platform you either create or you die yes all of these things start to bring down a creator but to make it even worse the mind itself isn't on your side all right how do i explain this let's say we have a line but mm -hmm. it's not a line it's the halo from halo Let's call this your happiness halo. For the sake okay. of theming, this grunt represents your current happiness. Now, let's say you won a million dollars. Naturally, your happiness hey, it goes to the right up. or up. Okay, it All goes up. All your needs are taken care of. You get a beautiful home, completely paid off, a fantastic car. Everything is great. But, uh, uh, wait, what's the grunt doing? What are you doing, Grunt? What are yeah, you doing? Yeah, it's going down. So you have $1 million, and somehow your happiness drifted right back to where it was. Yep, uh, because, well, actually, no, I don't want to bother explaining the concept because he'll explain it uh, in, in, in in like three three words, basically. Well, no, not three words. Simply put, uh, you get accustomed to the way things are. Now, I'm sure he'll put it in a more elaborate and concise way because this cause pretty much everyone could. This is the hedonic <laughs> treadmill. Oh, Even yeah. though you got temporary happiness from the money, our state of mind always drifts back to a baseline happiness. Yes. But that's not... Even and the baseline changes. And so if the number is big for long enough, that, that number becomes the baseline. And then for, for you to get that spike of happiness again, the next number has to be even bigger than the previous. And eventually that will fuck you over because there's only so much you can achieve as even a person. The worst part. Let's say through one way or another, you lost the house you bought and only have enough money to buy back the original house you had. It's like <sighs> and that would completely destroy you. Grunt, so it should be fine. Oh. All right, all right. Uh, we'll go on a tiny tangent here. I want to tell you something. So, okay, I imagine a channel, okay? I imagine a YouTube channel that makes a specific type of content. And suddenly you realize, I can't keep doing this content. The audience for this content is too small. Maybe you're just tired. Okay, let's 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 uh, let's assume a guy that only makes Minecraft videos. You're tired of Minecraft. You uh, you hate the game now. You've been ma making it for seven years. You you don't want to do this anymore. Or you're like, okay, you know what? I am good at YouTube. You know, I managed to uh, acquire an audience. How about we go make a video about Terraria, Undertale? I don't know something, just something else. Suddenly, you drop that video and your average view count goes, uh, and uh, the, all your previous videos, keep in mind, have been getting 100k views each, right? And then you make that video on a different game. 10k views, 6k, you make it again and again, and it goes down and down and down because the algorithm is like, bro, your fans are not here for it. Now, granted, you can build a new audience, but seeing that number go down and below the baseline is just mentally fucking exhausting lots of people quit that that's a, a huge quit point for a lot of content creators oh, oh no oh god oh no see now that your baseline happiness caught up to that luxurious lifestyle anything less than that even returning to normal feels so much worse than it did originally yeah that said uh the, it will stabilize down uh, in this the, the baseline will go down in the same way it went up 
but it is much a much more painful process than it going up. Well, no shit. Like it going up is a positive process. The baseline going down Your is, is a negative is one. Stuck like that until you get used to it again. Yes. If we apply this concept to YouTube, you start to see a brutal pattern that comes with virality. If one of your videos gets 10 million- Yeah, oh, holy shit. Okay, this is the worst feeling ever, right? Imagine you're a channel and your most popular videos are all from five years ago. How mentally damaging would that be? You keep making new videos and you're working so hard on them. You're right, you don't, you're skipping, you're sleeping for less hours a day to do this shit. And you look at your channel and the new videos are just not as popular as that stinker you made seven years ago. And you're like, man, they're like, in views no see yeah the more you think about it the more obvious it is like it, it's almost inevitable and for a, a, few, a few channels to, to for a few youtubers to go insane after after do, dealing with this shit like for so long failure even if you get millions of views every single video a strong community thousands of loving fans it never feels like enough yes In this way yes youtube is a literal roller coaster of emotions that you can't escape if you want to be successful and it's it, it is that in the worst way possible now some people are able to detach themselves from that uh, we'll look at asmigal for example he see he according to himself now i don't know how true that is it could be partially that he's trying to convince himself that that is the case but i would uh place my bets on the fact that he 100% does view himself as a character in a movie because that's what that's what he says himself. Uh, he, he, he views himself as a character and is able to treat whatever happens to him as just something that happened and hey, it's content and it's great. Uh, now, that is a rare exception and to most people, shit that happens to them will fuck them over. So let's finally answer the original question. Why are all YouTubers insane? Well, I think we got the answer already in the video, but hey, let's hear it summed up. Simply, human beings, especially the ones who tend to get famous on YouTube, are not built to handle what comes with it. Yes. While the more normal still get burned out and thrown all around emotionally, those with mental disorders have their effects exaggerated. Almost yep, 100%. no 28 year old could handle fame well, regardless of whether they have bipolar or not. But that's the thing, Yusuf does. He isn't power hungry or manipulative. He's a victim on the roller coaster of YouTube. I'm not trying to claim that this job is hard, but to think that YouTube is a cake. But it like no, but it straight up is. Like, like it straight up is. I mean, maybe the, yeah, sure. I can see him saying that it's not his point. Sure, but I think it straight up is well, a hard it's job. Simply untrue. So many stories of creators going off the deep end, and yet we still find a way to... It's easier for some than others, and yes, there are obviously harder jobs out there, you know, working in the coal mines. Wow, I'm, I'm sure someone will say that in the comments. They're going to be like, right, no, bro, YouTube isn't hard. Have you tried working in the coal mines? Bro, shut the fuck up. Just because there is something that is more difficult doesn't... <sighs> okay, I'm getting, I'm getting a little heated here, but just because there's something that is... It's like, okay, imagine I break my arm and I go tell you that I broke my arm, expecting you to be like, oh, dude, that sucks. But you go, bro, fuck your arm. Who cares? Look at my leg. My leg is broken. I can't walk. Oh, you just can't jack off with your right hand anymore. Who cares? My leg is broken. It's 10 times worse. Or I'm disabled, bro. I can't even stand. Like, man, fuck off. I... Oh. It's a basic argument. Uh, I'm sure if, if anyone goes and argues... In, in in the comments with a point like this i, I can just it's it's a, it's, a, it's a throwaway comment you just like it's it's clear that it's either a mentally <laughs> stupid fucking person or a kid and either way their opinion is irrelevant almost no 28 year old could handle fame well regardless of whether they have bipolar or not yes but that's the thing yusuf does he isn't power hungry claimed that this job is hard but to the deep end. walk away from this video with one message i'd want it to be this the world is that is nikocado avocado playing in the background and nobody breaks <laughs> that's down so good <laughs> that is so good if we look for the reason why instead of blindly witch hunting we might be able to stop it in the future but that's wishful thinking you no i don't i don't think that's mind. possible i don't think that's possible so long as so long as there are places for people to get unnatural levels of attention uh it will affect you mentally um in unusual ways after all until that day i'll still be here hopefully not going crazy and until next time have a fantastic day
Great video. Damn. Okay, we're leaving it a like for sure. There were some points I very ever so slightly disagreed with, but honestly, I think having slightly differing opinions is nothing unusual, and that does not take away from what the video has to say in any way whatsoever. Uh, great vid. Great vid. A awesome. Right, boys, this video doesn't even have that many views. 40K, I feel like that is a that is a crime. Go 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 give it a watch. Just just watch it if you've already seen it because you reacted to my reaction of it. <laughs> you're not reacting, you're watching my reaction of it. <laughs> then hey, just watch it on mute, you know. Just leave a like, a comment. Make the algorithm gods do do their thing, okay? And you know, do so for my channel as well. That would be nice. Uh, also hit up my main channel. Uh, I, I, I just I, I showed it a bunch in this video. Uh, as you as you probably saw, I don't upload that often, so you won't get bombarded with notifications. But I am working on a super sick video that will be coming out in a few months, hopefully, or maybe even less. Uh, we'll see. See uh, in the next one, which is hopefully relatively soon. Subscribe to to not miss whenever that happens, because you never know with my fucking upload schedule. <laughs> All right, bye. Uh, sorry.